Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. As you can see, it is a little chilly over here in California as of now. But even with the cold weather, we're still going to react to some videos. So today, we will be reacting to some true crime TikTok compilation videos. As always, put on your detective caps. Because we are about to delve into the true crimes of TikTok. But before we get started, I just want to give a special thank you to you guys for always interacting with this channel. It keeps the lights on here as you can see. And now, let's get on with the show. Let's watch. Have you ever wondered how accurate progression photos are? Progression photos are what detectives use on people that went missing years that and years ago to kind of photo, guess what though. they would look like today. So I'm going to show you some photos of missing children, what their progression photo looked like, and what they actually looked like when they were found. I hope that's not real. And if you're new to my page, I do all sorts of true crime and ghost stories, so make sure you're following along. So here's the first one. Here's two kids that went missing when they were children. And here's what detectives guessed they would look like as they got older. It's but here's accurate. what they actually looked like when they were found. As you can tell, like the hair color is wrong. General face shape is kind of right. Yeah, I guess on the little true. boy, it's more accurate. But these look like pretty much completely different people yeah so here's another one here's a, a baby that went missing and this is what detectives thought he might look like when he got older oh, and granted God. it's so hard to do this on babies yeah no as you can tell he doesn't really look anything like what his progression photo looked like when he was eventually found but this little girl below has some similar features to yeah. what they thought she would look like as she got older I'm so happy that this group of kids got found, but it's also proof that you need to find kids as quickly as possible because they just start looking so different so quickly. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. As you guys know, we are delving into the new age of AI. So with all this upcoming technology, we're going to get better results and it's going to be frighteningly, creepingly fast that all this technology is changing ever so rapidly so i can't wait to see it i hope it does more good than bad i know you could surf the web and surf the web now i'm aging you can see my age now but yes um but yeah no i'm, I'm really excited to see what the future provides for us with all this upcoming technology can't wait to see it the correct term was showing my age by the way this tenant lived in a luxury home for a year and a half for free and insisted that the landlord pay her a hundred thousand dollars. Elizabeth Horshron rented this stunning Airbnb oh, guest I house in LA story. that's worth 3.5 million dollars but decided to overstay without paying. She says she has a right to be there but everyone seems pretty upset about this entire situation. Elizabeth's been staying since September 2021 but the agreement was that she stayed for six months so instead she asked the landlord to pay her a hundred thousand dollars so that she can relocate. A judge rule that the landlord has no legal reason to evict Elizabeth from the home due to the city's rent laws, which absolutely sucks. And that then does. Elizabeth's attorney argued that she wasn't required to pay rent because the home had never been officially approved by the city for someone to live there. And she yeah. also claimed that the shower was built without a permit. Elizabeth has made it very difficult for the landlord to enter his own house and he even offered to pay for her hotel stay, which she declined. He called Elizabeth a tenant from hell and he filed a lawsuit suit to a victor and finally she was forced out of the home this month so my question to you guys wow. is do you think elizabeth's reasoning was valid or is she out of her mind you know all those um uh, all those city laws that la has i think that went in for her favor for sure um she did have a lot of valid points with the regulations and whatnot and you know how they just explained about the shower yeah, that's you can't build something without a permit. You're going to get caught if especially if you have a tenant like that or somebody calls the city on you and whatnot. So, yeah, that's that sucks for the landlord. And that also sucks for the tenant. They both had valid reasons. I don't know. That's a tough one. What do you guys think? Put, put it in the comments below. Let's hear it. Who was in the right? Imagine being so scared of police that you freeze to death. Brandon Bushman was a 34-year-old man living in Minnesota. On June the 26th, 2023, something horrific was revealed. Police responded to a call asking them to attend a property that hadn't been lived in since around February 2023. Just after 3.30pm, police found Brandon's body inside of a chest freezer in the property. 
Now, witnesses had seen police in the local area and spotted Brandon run from the upstairs of the house. It's believed that he had a warrant outstanding for his arrest and it's believed he was trying to evade police. In doing so, he ran to the freezer of the property, presumably hoping to hide there for a short amount of time. However, after climbing into the basement freezer by choice, tragically due to it being an older model of freezer, it had no facility to be opened from the inside. Wow. It had a latching mechanism on the outside of the freezer only. Tragically, Brandon That's was trapped. Sad. He couldn't escape the freezer. He was found deceased and the autopsy showed no evidence of him having any prior injuries or trauma to his body. Wow. What a way to go. That sucks. It kind of reminds me of the, um, what is it, like the rooms that you can only get in or you can't get out, like trap rooms. I don't know if that's what they're called, but how come everything was built like that in back in the days? It must have been a, there must have been a valid reason, especially you saw it in the um, in the old fashioned cars, I believe, in the movies. You know, like taken or something. Nobody could open the door from the inside when they're in the trunk been being kidnapped. And nowadays you have uh, latches that you can open them from the inside. So the trunks of the cars, by the way. It'll be harder to get kidnapped for sure unless you're tied and whatnot and all that. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, there must have been a reason. Um, I'm going to look into that to see why things were designed that way. But yeah, that's that's a horrible way to go. You were trying to get away from the cops. My boy did not. I served my customers human flesh burgers in my restaurant. My name is Joe Metney, also known as the Cannibal. I killed and dismembered about 10 women, turning them into hamburgers. It all began in 1995. I was searching for my son, whose custody had been taken away by my ex-wife a year earlier. Under a bridge in Baltimore, I encountered two homeless individuals who were using drugs with my ex. Enraged, I killed them with an axe. I also killed a fisherman, fearing he might be a witness, then disposed of the three bodies in the river nearby. A few months later, I came across two prostitutes. Wow. Like a butcher, I turned them into meat, which I stored in Tupperware containers this placed guy was in paranoid. the freezer. The remains were buried in small graves I had dug in the woods. In the following weeks, I sold human meat hamburgers on the side of the road from a trailer. Since the taste of human flesh is very similar to that of pork, no one could tell the difference. Whenever I ran out of meat, I sought new victims among the homeless and prostitutes, luring them with promises of drugs or easy money to create my horrifying recipe of human meat. It was in 1996 that I was convicted curl. and sentenced, and on August 5th, 2017, I died in prison. Yeah, this guy was very paranoid, and of course, because you have uh, tendencies, anytime you murder something, you become that much more uh, gone from from being sane to insane. You have all those psychotic uh, tendencies and the naturism and behaviorisms. They say that uh, once you kill something, you're no longer the same. Yeah, that was very, uh, that was very nasty. Um, I did not know that human meat tasted like pork. I learned something new. I don't know if that's true. I've heard of different things, but, you know, who am I to know? I'm I'm not a cannibal, I swear. <laughs> You'll never know my name, but I scared the hell out of California in the late 60s with a wave of enigmatic murders. Known as the Zodiac Killer, I was responsible for no less than 37 serial murders between the late 60s and early 70s. This nickname refers to the logo of the Zodiac watch brand, similar to the symbol the I used to sign my murders, a target site in a Celtic cross. I was active in Northern California, and used to attack young couples in their cars at night in isolated locations. I killed several of my victims with a pistol and coldly murdered a couple, Cecilia Shepard and Brian Hartnell, by stabbing them several times. It was a night in September 1969, the 27th to be precise. I can't believe they never Wearing found a balaclava and my fetish symbol, I approached them and threatened them with a gun. I asked Cecilia to tie up her husband, then tied him up in turn. Afterwards, I had a long talk with them, announcing that I was about to stab them, which I did, stabbing Brian eight times and Cecilia ten times. I then carved the following inscriptions on Brian's car door with a knife. For several years, I sent letters to the local press containing messages encrypted with strange symbols, all of which have been deciphered to date. 
the latest was by a French cryptologist who claims that I am Lawrence Kane, one of the known suspects in the case, now deceased. I have inspired several books and a multitude of films and TV series. Today, the mystery of my identity remains inexplicable. Yeah, whoever the Zodiac Killer was, you can't deny that he was very intelligent in his sort of way. Um, it's such a feat that we'll never know who he was and how he kept hidden. That's it's sad to say, but that was that's pretty impressive. Not to praise a killer or anything like that, but for someone to get away from the law or any punishment, that's pretty crazy and scary. It's kind of like the, now that we're talking about this, kind of reminds you of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, character. Kind of similar, not really, but that just popped into my head. Just because, I don't know, I don't think he got caught, the Texas Chainsaw Killer. Um, but yeah, this Zodiac Killer or whoever he was, uh, he knew his stuff and it's frightening. Hopefully we don't get someone like that in the future hopefully nobody gets inspired by that to do the same horrific things that he did but you know history i have to be doom and gloom here history tends to repeat itself i really hope it doesn't unsettling clue was discovered in the case of the missing woman and the mysterious road trip gwen brunel is a 27 year old from idaho she left her home on june the 26th to embark on a solo road trip and was last seen on cctv she told her family that she would stay in regular contact with them, but shortly after starting the road trip, her phone was shut off. Bizarrely, she told her boyfriend a story about what she planned on doing. She bought 11 show rabbits and told her boyfriend that she was going to California to meet a rabbit judge for training. She'd packed up the rabbits with enough food and water for them for about a week. However, the rabbit judge in question stated that they never heard of her and never made any plans to meet with Gwen. Gwen was spotted at a small shop just 20 miles from her home. This was on the day that she left on the road trip and strangely she was captured on camera wearing different clothes than the clothes she left her house in. Also strangely, as the place was just 20 miles away from her home, it took her three hours to get there. She was then seen the day after at a petrol station in Jordan Valley, Oregon. So what, did she plan to She then went across the road to buy some snacks and reportedly told a member of staff that she was in a hurry. The member of staff, though, then saw her sitting in her car outside for an hour. She vanished and her parents reported her missing. Disturbingly, her car was found abandoned in Malheur County, about half a mile from the highway. Her keys and possessions were still in the car, along with the 11 rabbits. Tragically, five of the rabbits had passed away from the heat. There was a huge search in the area to try and find the missing girl, but no luck. Two months later, though, there was a disturbing clue. Her t-shirt was found tangled in a barbed wire fence near Dog Creek. Her boots were also then recovered not far away from the t-shirt. Police say there was no sign of an abduction, but why would she leave those rabbits to die? All of her family and friends said how much she loved rabbits and that she would never leave them in harm's way. Police are encouraging anyone with any information to come forwards. This case sounds like a typical runaway, um, having an excuse to go somewhere and then not be found or not want to, wanting to be found, excuse me. Um, or maybe she just out of nowhere developed some kind of mental illness. Uh, a lot of strange factors in this one. It's crazy how the mind works. If you ask me, it sounds like either or. I'm going with the more of the runaway because that's what it sounds like to me. But what do you guys think? Groomed by a man more than three times her age, Kellyanne Bates was only 14 when she met the man that would end her life in what still remains one of the most horrific murders in the UK. Quick trigger warning, some of the details in the video are quite graphic and hard to listen to. James Patterson Smith was an extremely violent man on the outside, he looked perfectly normal and was actually described no, by friends not look as well-groomed and house-proud. He'd been in a few relationships before meeting Kelly, but they'd all ended due to his violent temper. He'd even tried to drown two of his previous girlfriends. And at the age of 46, he met 14-year-old Kelly while she was babysitting for some of his friends. Their relationship was kept a secret by Kelly and James for two years, 
but at the age of 16, when she left school, she moved in with him. Mm. When Kelly's parents finally met James, they were shocked by his age, and Kelly's mum did everything she could to try and persuade Kelly to leave the relationship. As the months went on, Kelly became more and more withdrawn, and eventually stricter. all contact between her and her family stopped. On April 16, 1996, the police received a call from James saying that he'd accidentally drowned his girlfriend in the bath. When they arrived at the house, they found blood throughout the rooms and Kelly's naked body was in the bedroom. It became quite clear that this was not an accidental death. Kelly had drowned in the bath, but only after enduring up to a month of torture at the hands of James. Kelly had over 150 injuries in total. She'd been tied up with a ligature around her neck. She had burns to her legs, a fractured arm, multiple stab wounds from knives, scissors and forks. Her hands were crushed, she had stab wounds inside her mouth, she'd been partially scalped, and she had two empty eye sockets. Mm. Kelly had endured all of these injuries in the weeks leading up to her death, before finally being dragged to the bathroom and drowned. James wow. was quickly arrested, but denied murder, saying that Kelly had inflicted all these injuries on herself to make him look bad. He then changed his story and said that it was him, but that Kelly had taunted him and dared him to do it. It only took the jury one hour to find him guilty and he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 20 years. In January 2023, he actually became eligible for parole, but it was denied and he remains behind Good. bars. That piece of Schmidt does not deserve to get paroled or any access to the outside. That is sad. Took out the eyes, everything. He wasn't satisfied with, with just one thing. He really was a masochist. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, he took his time. I'm, he definitely enjoyed it. I hope he's rotting. Poor girl. Parents should have been a lot stricter. I know that's a conflict of parenting, but I mean, she's underage. I don't know how it is in UK. It's a double-edged sword situation. Terrible, terrible. This is one of the worst cases in human history. This is the murder of Christine Silouan. She was from the Philippines and was a volunteer in church and she used the church every day from 4 to 6 p.m. On the day of her murder, she went to church as per her schedule, but she didn't come home after that. Her parents then started to worry and they began searching for her with their neighbors. And what they found is absolutely horrid. They found her body in a farm where half her face was sliced like a piece of pizza, and her face was literally skinned down to her skull. Also, her brain was completely destroyed by acid. The police then started investigating and they checked the cameras and found out that she was with a guy. The people started protesting about this case and the case was then given to special officers. They had a lot of pressure on this. A week before this happened, she broke up with her boyfriend so the police took him into custody and he was proving that he was at home all day when she was murdered, but officers were completely tired of this case, and they then sentenced him as the murderer. But after a few months, a thief was caught in a store where he confessed that he murdered and raped Christine. He said he started talking to her on Facebook with a fake account, and was using fake photos of another guy that was pretty good looking. Christine fell for the guy, and she assumed that he was about 20 years old, and they started texting daily. One day, they both decided to meet up at 6 p.m. near the church she went to. But upon arriving, Christine noticed that this was not the guy she was talking to, and he was around 40-ish years old. She then refused to talk to him and tried to go back, but he held her hands extremely forcefully. He then took her far away from town and raped her repeatedly and put iron rods inside her personal organs. He then cut her face in half and then skinned her whole head down to the skull. And to make it even worse, he put acid inside of her head. The autopsy also revealed that her tongue, trachea, esophagus, parts of her neck, and her right ear were missing. The self-proclaimed killer of this case named Renato Lanis said that he used barber-type scissors and stabbed her 30 times on different parts of her body and skinned her face. Christine Silouan was only 16 years old, and this case is extremely haunting. There's a picture of her body that was found in the field, but Google did a really good job of not showing it and hiding it. Good. So even if you do go look at the picture, to see that. I don't think you're going to find it. I don't want to see This is one that. of those cases that after you get done reading it, you just feel some sort of uneasiness. Yeah. 
I feel so bad for Christine's family, and I can't imagine finding my daughter in this state. May Christine Silouan rest in peace. Dude, I would go in rage mode if that was my daughter. I'd go to the ends of the world. Yeah, you guys just got to be careful who you meet online, who you talk to nowadays. A lot of catfishing, a lot of spam bots and whatnot, and could lead to things of this nature. Yeah, hearing all that and reading all that just made made all my bones and my body just feel uneasy and I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see that either. It's it's weird to say that even though I watch horror movies cuz I know it's fake when you watch the horror movies, you know that all that's like special facts and all that, but like one thing's to to see it in movies and the other thing is to actually see it in real life. It's a whole different thing. It's shocking to think that there are actually people out there capable of doing something like this to another human being. This is the murder of 12-year-old Shanda Shera, who was literally burned alive by a group of teenagers. In 1991, Shanda was attending Hazelwood Middle School in New Albany. In October that year, Shanda attended a school dance with fellow student Amanda Heverin. Amanda had recently been in a relationship with another girl, 16-year-old Melinda Loveless and on Melinda seeing her with Shanda, she became extremely jealous. Melinda began making threats, even telling other students that she would kill Shanda. On January 10th, 1992, Melinda enlisted the help of three friends, 17-year-old Laurie and two 15-year-olds Hope and Tony. They drove over to Shanda's dad's house where Shanda was staying and told her that Amanda wanted to see her and they'd give her a lift. She couldn't see Melinda hiding under a blanket in the back seat, so she went with them. As they started driving, Melinda jumped out from under the blanket with a knife and she threatened to slit Shanda's throat if she didn't confess to stealing Amanda from her. Shanda was actually too terrified to speak and Melinda ordered the other girls to drive to a remote trash dump in the forest. They thought that she was just trying to scare Shanda, but they were dead wrong. Melinda dragged Shanda from the car and started to slam her knee into Shanda's face until she was covered in blood. Laurie then joined in with the attack while Hope and Tony stayed behind in the car. Melinda and Laurie then tried to slit Shanda's throat but the knife wasn't sharp enough. So they stabbed her in the chest, strangled her and then threw her into the trunk of the car thinking that she was dead. They then went back to Laurie's house to clean up and they heard Shanda screaming from the trunk of the car. When they realised she was still alive, Laurie ran out with the knife and stabbed her a few more times. She then drove off with Melinda to carry on torturing Shanda, this time with a tyre iron. They then drove to a gas station and filled a two litre bottle with gasoline. Shanda was then wrapped in a blanket naked and set on fire. Shanda was actually still alive at this point and the girls drove off while she burnt to death. Melinda then ordered them to go back a few minutes later pour more gasoline on her and make sure she was dead. The four girls then went and ate McDonald's breakfast and laughed about what they'd just done, wow. comparing Shanda's burnt body to one of the sausages that they were eating. That's sick. Later that day, Shanda's burnt remains were found and Hope and Tony couldn't handle the guilt anymore, so they went to the police with their parents and spilled the whole story. All four girls were arrested and tried as adults. Tony was sentenced to 20 years but served only nine and was released in 2000. Hope received 35 years but served only 14 and was released in 2006. Melinda and Laurie were both sentenced to 60 years but were released in 2018 and 2019. Wow. Jealousy is a deadly poison. That should have been explainable from her last name. I mean, Loveless. Melinda Loveless. That should have been an explanation within itself. Dude, she should have gone life. All, all the ones who did all that they should have all gotten life. Like, you can't just go to a McDonald's and freaking eat there and laugh about what you did. Like, that's not cool. McDonald's is, is all right, but don't kill. Yeah, I don't know. That's messed up. That's really messed up. You guys just don't get jealous. That's all I'm trying to say. This creepy doctor might be the worst pedophile in American history. Time to expose him. In 2010, Dr. Earl Bradley from Delaware was convicted on 471 charges of raping and molesting over 100 children. This story is actually really sad. So Earl was from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
And after graduating from medical like school, though. he practiced in Philadelphia, where I live, at the Jefferson Hospital. But this is where the story yeah, is so sad. So in 1994, like he was accused of sexual misconduct, dealing with a child. The hospital claimed to have investigated this claim, and they found there was nothing to the claim. Then in 1995, he was accused again of sexual misconduct with a child. Once again, the hospital tried to investigate, tried, and they found that nothing had happened. They didn't believe the accusers. But after these allegations, Earl couldn't continue to work in Philadelphia, so he moved to Delaware, and that's where he opened this creepy clinic of his that's infamous now, known as Babies. And this is where the story takes an even darker turn. So, Babies was a pediatric clinic that Earl Bradley ran. It was decorated super creepily, looked like a carnival. It had all these child-themed decorations, and it looked really innocent. He had a giant Buzz Lightyear statue that greeted kids when they walked into the clinic. And the whole office had this weird see that decor, Dew like night machine, fairy tale stuff. And his practice ran for a number of years in Delaware. But in 2004, his own sister, Linda, was forced to alert the State Medical Society because patients had complained to them about her own brother, Earl Bradley, inappropriately touching them during exams. But this was once again somehow brushed under the rug. Then in 2005, just a year later, more disturbing allegations were made against Earl Bradley. When a nurse came forward and said she had seen him videotaping patients playing and that he regularly performed unnecessary vaginal exams on his young patients. Mm. And once again, this is just a picture of the decor of the building. Super creepy. Another complaint was made in 2008 about this doctor and finally an investigation was undertaken and wow, did they find some disturbing shit. So when they looked through Dr. Earl Bradley's belongings, they discovered that he had been videotaping his rapes. He had over 13 hours of footage that was recorded on hidden cameras in his office and in his home. Footage of him sexually assaulting young children. After more investigating, they discovered that Earl Bradley had forced children as young as three months old to perform intercourse and oral sex on him. And like I said, this sicko videotaped all of it for his personal pleasure. Wow. After the arrest and these allegations were featured in the news and made public, lots of families came forward with sordid stories of the crooked doctor and what he did to their kids. He made little toddler infants have intercourse. Um, I'm speechless. Yeah, there's some very sick people out there. Very sick. That uh, that facility or whatever he did, the babies, the decorum was really strange. Um, especially from a grown man, if you're doing that, it's kind of a red flag. Um, you know, pedophiles have a very, very sick of mine. Um, I don't know what drives people to be interested in that sort of thing. It's really strange. Why would you fantasize? Yeah, it's... Yeah. Anyways, I know the rest of the story that his facility got uh, torn down. So that's really cool. You know, he got caught. You know, this just goes to show you that karma comes around. Believe it or not, everyone will get all bad things. Must come to an end. Really glad he got taken down. Well, all right, guys. That was the video. Hope you guys like this reaction video to True Crimes TikTok completions. And you guys look forward to more content coming up soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.